At the time of this story, I was 20 years old and living in an apartment with my mom and little brother while attending community college. When we first moved in, the apartments were well run, but before long, the manager was transferred elsewhere and his replacement didn't have the same skill for keeping undesirable types out. The police became a regular sight in our neighborhood, and it was rare that a day would go by without seeing them. The woman who moved in downstairs from us began openly dealing drugs. People would come and go at all hours and leave stuffing little bags of various substances into their pockets. Mostly weed, but definitely other stuff as well. They could not have been more obvious if they tried. There was always a crowd of shady-looking men with large, unfriendly dogs hanging around in the yard and sitting on our stairs. They'd act like it was a personal insult if we had to get by to walk up or down our own stairs, and they were generally quite intimidating. The breaking point came when her customers started getting the wrong address and would come up to our door instead. We'd be sitting in the living room and hear footsteps come up the stairs. The doorknob would turn and jiggle against the lock. We began religiously locking the doors at all times. One night, I was home alone when someone suddenly began beating on the door, screaming barely comprehensible obscenities. I grabbed the biggest knife I could find out of the kitchen and shouted through the door that I was calling 911. Luckily, this made him leave, but in hindsight, I probably should have called the cops anyway. I was just so relieved that he was gone, and since I had no idea what he looked like, I figured it wouldn't do much good anyway. After that incident, I made it a habit to push the couch in front of the door every night before I went to bed. Mom had had enough. She was met with a total lack of interest when she approached the manager, so she decided the only other thing to do would be to contact the police herself. She seemed happy when she got off the phone because at least they seemed to take her seriously and promised to investigate. The first sign of trouble came the next night. We could hear a lot of noise coming from downstairs, and when we peeked out the window, we saw people moving in and out of the apartment, carrying cardboard boxes to a dented van on the street. Bright and early the next morning, the police raided the place, and you guessed it, clean as a whistle. We didn't realize the implications of what had happened at first. Things inevitably started up again a few days later, so we called the cops again and the same thing happened. We realized at this point that it probably wasn't a coincidence. Somebody in the local police department had to have been tipping them off, one of the curses of a small town. I was angry and disappointed, but figured it hadn't hurt to try. I had no idea how wrong I was. About a week later, I was getting ready for an evening class. I'd just gotten out of the shower, and I was in my bedroom in a bathroom, picking out what I wanted to wear. I heard a loud bang on the front door, but didn't think much of it. We'd been expecting a package, and the UPS man always knocked loudly. My mom's footsteps went to answer it, and I heard her say something. I couldn't make out the words, but her tone caught my attention. I knew something was wrong. I reached for my door, but before I could open it, it flew open in my face. I could barely process the fact that there was a huge man with a gun in my bedroom before I was grabbed by the shoulders and flung to the floor. My immediate thought was that the druggies from downstairs had come to get us once and for all. I was completely convinced that I was about to be raped and murdered. At the time, I was still recovering from a surgery, and of course I managed to fall with all my weight on my recently operated on wrist. Between the shock of the situation and the pain of the fall, I immediately burst into tears. I guess I didn't look very threatening in that moment because the man stepped back a bit. That's when I saw police in large letters on the front of his vest. The next few minutes were a blur. I was herded out to the living room where my mom was already waiting. The officer left in a hurry, just telling me and my mom to wait there. I was completely dazed. My mom was in hysterics, and there was loud shouting going on outside. After a short while, the officer returned to tell us he had the wrong address. 
He basically told us that shit happens and offered his card, telling us to call if we had any questions. And then he left. I went straight to the emergency room and spent the next two hours getting my wrist x-rayed and put into a splint. I didn't know what else to do, so afterwards I just headed to my math class. I was terrified of being back at home. Needless to say, I learned absolutely nothing during the lecture, but having my professor and classmates around was pretty comforting. The next morning, the officer from the previous night knocked on our door. It freaked me out to hear his voice, so I hid in the bathroom. And I didn't hear what was said, but I definitely heard when mom slammed the door shut. She was absolutely furious. I'd never seen her look so angry. Apparently, the officer had brought a carefully prepared document he was demanding that we sign, basically saying that we understood their mistake and that we wouldn't seek legal action. She told him to go to hell and shut the door in his face. Ten minutes later, the phone rang. It was a nurse from the emergency room, calling to let us know that someone who claimed to be law enforcement had come by asking for copies of my ER visit records. Of course, since the hospital didn't have permissions to release these documents, they said that I would have to come and sign some forms in order for anyone to access that information. After asking the nurse some more questions, we found out that the officer was the same one we had been dealing with. At the hospital, he had insisted that he was not the officer involved and was simply investigating the incident. Over the next few weeks, every time I started to tell someone about what we were going through with this guy, they would immediately launch into their own horror story about this officer as soon as they heard his name. An old teacher said that he shot one of her former students during a marijuana bust and left him on the ground to bleed to death. Luckily, in that situation, the other officer on the scene was able to administer first aid and saved the student's life. A neighbor said that that officer had dragged his disabled uncle down a flight of stairs by his feet, hitting his head on the concrete steps. Another neighbor said that he pulled him out of the shower by his hair and held a gun to his head over a parole violation. When I did a quick Google search on him, I found out that he had been fired from a nearby city police department for shooting a handcuffed man in the head, killing him. He somehow claimed it was self-defense, so even though he was fired, he was never charged with a crime. Soon, the medical bills for the ER visit came in. They were so expensive and I didn't have insurance, so I had no choice but to file a suit. I found myself a lawyer and submitted a claim. That was when shit really hit the fan. We started getting harassing phone calls at all hours of the night. Sometimes, just silence. Sometimes, breathing on the other end sometimes graphic sexual comments. We stopped answering the phone, and they would just let it ring until the machine picked up, immediately hang up, and call right back. My mom went to leave for work one morning and quickly discovered that her car door handle had been coated in some kind of caustic chemical. She washed it off as quickly as possible, but still ended up going to the hospital with severe burns. I had just gotten my driver's permit and was out on a practice drive, when it started to rain on the highway. I flipped on the windshield wipers, only to find that they had been covered in motor oil. It smeared across the windshield and completely obscured my vision. Fortunately, the road was empty, and I stayed calm enough to break and pull over without getting in an accident. Other things started happening too, less severe, but definitely with sinister intentions. Furniture was stolen off the porch, my boots vanished when I left them outside, and several pounds of weed in a plastic sack appeared on our porch one morning. My mom called the building manager about that last one, and for once the lady did something useful and actually fetched it and threw it in the dumpster for us. I had never felt so helpless in my life. What were we supposed to do? Call the police? The one resource we were supposed to rely on for safety was exactly the thing that was keeping us scared. It was around this time that a friend who lived abroad suggested I come and stay with him for a while. Out of fear for my own safety, I dropped out of school and left the country for six months while the lawsuit worked its way through the courts. My mom and brother moved in with family in another town without submitting a forwarding address. Eventually, my tourist visa ran out and I had to come home. 
I was a complete nervous wreck. I ended up settling out of court just to make it so this would all be over. My lawyer got a copy of the search warrant the police had used that night that they burst into the apartment. It was riddled with grammatical errors and kept randomly switching between apartment 18, my apartment number, and the number of the unit down the street. The suspect they were looking for was someone with an entirely different name who looked nothing like any of us. Apparently, she had been selling prescription drugs. A copy of her driver's license was included and clearly listed Unit 25 as her address. I have no proof, but I'm absolutely certain that someone had been tipping off the drug dealers downstairs. I often wonder if the wrong apartment number on that warrant wasn't a mistake at all. Perhaps it was retaliation for trying to get their friends in trouble. I was somehow able to regain full use of my hand, which the doctor told me might never happen. I no longer jump at loud noises, and I only feel slightly uneasy when I see police officers rather than having a full-on panic attack. It's been six years, and I'm only now beginning to reclaim my life and finish school. I feel like I lost the best part of my 20s to these assholes, and I'm still bitter about it. I currently live with friends informally. I'm not on a lease. My address is not on any documentation and I get all my mail to a P.O. box in another town. Depending on where you look, I supposedly live in five different places, scattered from one end of the county to the other. And none of that is going to change until I move much farther away from where this all happened. It doesn't sound like anyone involved has faced legal consequences, and for all I know, that officer could still be working in my old town, terrorizing more innocent people.